Hello, this is Adrian Jensen with Predictive Engineering. Um, this is a technical seminar on FEMAP and NX Nastrian. And today, I just kind of want to give, uh, give an overview. Um, we have a lot of new users. There's lots of tips and tricks in here that will be useful for experienced users. And um, we want to introduce some of the new features that are coming out. And also announce that FEMAP version 11.1.2 and Nastran version 9.1 are due to release any day now. Might be coming out this week or, or possibly next week. All right, so today um, I want to start with basically a brand new install uh, for FEMAP. So this is what we'd see with a fresh installation. Uh, there we go. All is working, so we're good to go. Um, all right, so this is what you see with a brand new install of FEMAP and NX Nastran. Everything is default. I've removed all of my custom settings, all of my special views. All of this is fresh. So for a new user or a new install on a machine for a current user, this is what you see. You get some tips of the day. If you want to get rid of these, you click this here. And this is what we've got. Now, if you check out the, uh, the attachment that came out with the webinar notification, you'll see there's a couple different things that we categorize under Welcome to FEMAP. We've got panes, we've got toolbars, and we've got the preferences. So I want to spend about 15, 20 minutes just to walk through each of these things because a lot of times when you're running into problems down the road, coming back and working with preferences here could be uh, could be the solution to your problem. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the organization of the graphic interface. Uh, like a lot of Windows programs, it uses toolbars and it uses panes. So these window panes, you can move them around. I'm just grabbing the, the top here, clicking it and dragging it. You can resize it. You can close them. You can put them wherever you want. A lot of times if you have dual monitors, you can remove all this stuff, put it on the other monitor, and then you're going to have all of the space just for your model here. Thanks, John. Um, if you close these and you're wondering how to get them back, come up to the Tools menu bar, and you see these are all of your window panes here. So if we go to Other Windows, there's that Messages bar. The other thing you see as you move these around is these little locators pop up. It's like a little diamond here, and they're also on the side. And that just shows you how to snap that window pane into a certain location. So I like to snap the message window on the, on the bottom here. The model info tree is another really important window pane. It's a really useful. As you're working through the modeling process, you have that here. And the other one that I like is Entity Info. And it's just a little one here. Uh, when we're working with curves, surfaces, mesh, whatever, uh, this will give us information about the active entity we have. Um, let's bring in some geometry just so we have something to something to work with here. And this is just a little example model that we've been working on. Um, <clears throat> the other thing we've got to work with as far as the interface goes is toolbars. And these are located across the top by default, and these are the default toolbars. Similar thing, uh, just like with Microsoft Office products, you can move these toolbars around, you can close them, you can actually park them a lot of different places in the FEMAP interface. And if you close these or want to add new toolbars, you come to Tools, Toolbars, and here's a list of all these different toolbars here. You can get to the same list by right clicking in the space up here. and You can see you can turn on and turn off these toolbars. In some of our other online seminars we talk about automation and customization. Um, so you can come in and customize your toolbars. Say there's certain commands that you're using on a daily basis and you hate searching through the file menus to find those. We can add those commands right here. Um, you know, let's say we want to rebuild our model file before we save it to help compact the model size. I'm just going to click and drag that button, put it right there next to save. That way I don't have to hunt through the file menus. 
So there's lots of different things you can do. You can create new toolbars with all of your own custom commands. You can do simple modifications like I just did there. And you can really get everything set up just the way you like. Um, now once you have all of this stuff organized the way you like, um, and you have a new installation, or you switch computers, you have to go through this whole process again. Well, fortunately, there's a way to avoid that. You can actually save this layout, because what they call it is a layout file. And that remembers your, your window panes, your locations, your sizes, your toolbars, your custom commands. It remembers all of that for you. And that's located within Preferences. So let's go to File, Preferences. Not to be confused with references. So come to preferences. And let's just walk through these one by one. There's lots of different tabs here. And there's lots of important stuff here. So I'm just going to work my way through messages. Generally, um, I leave the defaults with messages. And this relates to the messages window here. So having your message window pane open is very important. A lots of good information gets dumped there during the process. Um, but the defaults are going to take care of here. You're going to get plenty of messages. Views. Now this is where it gets a little bit more fun. Um, if you want to take screenshots of your model, you can control the resolution of your screenshots. So by default, it'll use your screen resolution. If you want really high resolution images, I recommend this option here, screen scaled by. I use something like a 4x and that is plenty big. Uh, we recently went to the FEMAP symposium. We had a huge banner, uh, maybe four feet tall, six feet wide. I used a screenshot right out of FEMAP and even blown up that big. Um, it still looked great. So this is a really handy little thing. Um, you know, if you're working with engineering reports or need graphics for something online, um, emails, any of that, it's a great way to get high quality images. Okay, and we could even do, let's do a little test run here. I'm going to drop these to PowerPoint. So let's do a screenshot with just the default resolution here. And I'll say file, picture, copy. And let's just drop that in a PowerPoint here. So there we go. It's not bad. If we zoom in, it's a little grainy here. If we up that resolution, let's say screen scaled by four, we'll do that same screenshot, uh, picture copy. Look at that, much, much larger. So you get a great high quality image there. All right, moving on back in preferences. The other thing in views is your startup view. So we talked about customizing toolbars and panes, but you can also customize your view, your background color, the color of your text, your text size, your font. All of this stuff is going to be customizable within FEMAP. And say you get everything set up just the way you like, you save that view, you can use that customized view for all of your new models. We have a model on the Predictive Engineering website with our preferred view settings. So if you like what you see, um, you can download that model, save that view to your library, and you can use that as your default. So you see here, I have one here called Predictive Engineering. That's my default view. So any new models that I start up are going to use my default view, and I don't have to go through and change all the colors and sizes and everything there. <clears throat> okay. Graphics. Now, graphics controls not really your, your resolution for your screenshots, um, but what we control here is what gets displayed on screen during the modeling process. Um, there's a couple of different things here that I like to mess with, especially with really complicated or large models. That's the dynamic rotation. You can choose what gets, what's gets included in dynamic rotation. So right now, pretty much everything gets included. But if I wanted to turn off a few of these things, like points and curves, um, 
now those points and curves turn off when I'm rotating the model. And that just is a little bit more economical as far as uh, your graphics are concerned for big models. User interface. This is where you get to save and load your layouts. So I was talking about once you get everything just the way you like here, come into preferences and save your layout. Um, I'm going to just do, you know, we can call this one a test layout. That way when I move to a new computer or I have a new version of FEMAP installed on my, my machine, I can come into preferences, load my layout, and it'll update everything just the way I had it before. Um, it's somewhat compatible between versions, um, so that's that's really useful. The other thing we'll see here, auto-repeat commands. Um, we'll see this once we start to get into the workflow. When you say you need to create 10 different materials, auto-repeat will automatically kind of prompt, all right, here's your first one, you want to make another one. And it'll bring up uh, the auto-repeat when we see it in the modeling process. database. Now this is really important, your scratch directory. During the modeling and analysis process, FEMAP is constantly generating these temporary files. FEMAP generates temporary files so you can do things like undo or maybe it's going to crash during a save. It'll help you recover those files that crashed. Um, you want all these temporary files directed to one location and by default VMAP will set up a scratch drive for you. You can see mine's just on the C drive here. So if all these temporary files end up in one location, and I know where that is, I can clean them out once a month and I don't have to go hunting through all the different directories. The other important thing is you want this on your local drive. You don't want to be writing scratch files across your network. That can really slow things down. So be aware of that. Geometry, model file, um, I go with the default settings here. Interfaces, this is where this scratch directory comes up again. So the previous one lets us know where FEMAP is going to be creating its temporary files. The scratch we see here on the interfaces tab is where NASTRAN is going to be generating its temporary files. So the two settings I say is pick an output directory, option two, direct output to, Again, option two, a specified directory, and pick that same folder on your local C drive. Again, we don't want to write this stuff over the network. A few other things that are important on this page, if you're working with a large model, you can choose to use the 64-bit NASTRAN. Um, this isn't something that you want on all the time. This is something uh, you kind of want to use when necessary. If you're using it all the time, you're kind of requesting more resources from your computer than you really need. So if you're solving a really large model, use this option here. Results. Um, I would say if you're working with very, very large result sets, you know, gigabytes of data, you want to go ahead and look into attaching to results files. And when we had our uh, version 11 release webinar, we had an example of attaching to results files. There's lots of uh, kind of different techniques there. So if that's something that interests you, check out our website because we have a bit more in-depth information on that one. Our libraries, all this is going to be our default here. Colors, this is just the default colors for curves, points, surfaces, etc. And if you use a space ball or a 3D mouse, um, you can do a little bit of adjusting here. So that pretty much covers it for the preferences. Um, this is always good to walk through with a new install or for a new user, kind of take this step by step. Now, I'm going to do one quick thing here. Uh, let's go ahead and load a view. The view that I have, I have a couple of views saved here, and I'm going to get to them from visibility. Visibility is what turns on and off all of the different entities within our view. You can see I can turn off points, curves, surfaces. I can also load and save views. So when, every, when I get everything set just right, I can load a view. You can see I've got a predictive engineering view here. 
and my backgrounds are different, my curve colors are different, and those views are what I set as default within the preferences. So that's really pretty useful.